Social Club. You may be interested in some phase of radio and television broadcasting. If you've built your own radio, selecting the records DJs will play on the air, careers in program. More than a hundred years have passed since a simple nursery rhyme spoken into a small hand crank machine gave birth to Rick Sound and created an industry with an annual income today of two and one half billion dollars. There are more than 1,200 companies in the United States producing some 2,600 albums and 6,200 singles, totaling millions of records a year. Rock and roll, jazz, soul music, show tunes, each has its own fans and followers. Hi-fi and stereo equipment reproduce faithfully the sounds of artists and symphonies on 73 million phonographs in American homes. All this because a century ago, Thomas Edison spoke into the talking machine, and the talking machine played his words right back. The station was established in 1959, but changed its format five years ago to what is known as progressive rock and began featuring new wave music and new made stars. The album-oriented rock stations that come out of the city and here on the island pretty much uh, rotate their music in a quick fashion. The award from Rolling Stone is nothing new to the station. It received an award in 1982 for the best format. According to Billboard magazine, the station has the biggest influence on record sales in the New York area. It's probably going to have two or three hits on it at least. I think he's a really good singer and um, he's a good like, answer too. Yeah. I like the beats to all his music. Radio personality Larry the Duck is talking about WDRE's designated driver program designed to cut down on alcohol related accidents. It's a problem. It's hard to believe vinyl records just aren't making the rounds anymore. We were warned that clear and crisp compact discs were the wave of the future, but that future is now. There's still a vinyl buyer out there. Um, they are, they're slowly decreasing in numbers, but they feel a little hurt that we don't have the LPs, but we just have to go with progress and uh, there's just no more volume there, so we have to go where there's volume. Earth, wind, and fire. With the cost of players down, CD sales are up. They account for about 40% of the sales. LPs contribute only 2 to 3% of the sales at Camelot, and that merits only a few racks for the top 40. He almost bought 100 records from here because he can find another store. Well, it seems the music industry is forcing us to turn CD. Some customers say they won't. I can buy a lot more records for the same price that I'm buying CDs. But store managers say in two years they may not have a choice. I can eventually see one of these days possibly a uh, top 40 format being all CD selection, not be able to find it on record. Cassettes, yes. Cassettes will still last. Maybe not. The industry predicts in five to ten years even they will be out. What CDs are doing to records, digital audio tape is expected to do to cassettes. The oldies were still youngsters, the Grateful Dead weren't even alive, and the Beatles were just another species of bug. 1931, Don Leary opened a record store. I've been here 20 years. Has I it was, been 20 years? Ago? Yeah, right here. Oh my God. Then I burned out on East Hennepin. I was there 20 years, then I was down in the island before that. Yeah, you know? I remember that. Don has been in the record business 58 years. Started selling 78s. A few years later, they came out with 45s, then LPs, then CDs, and it's attracting big crowds in search of unusual and hard-to-come-by classics. These are all hard to come by. They're hard to sell some of them, too. <laughs> Buy a lot of Willie Nelson. We got quite a few. I see that you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 17. I don't know whether you got enough money for all of this. It's 982. Yeah. 
<laughs> you can tell Don isn't too upset by this unplanned retirement, but like I say, he's survived a lot of changes. He'll survive this one, too. Like an oldie, but a goodie. I'm Steve Hartman reporting. <laughs> it is a while. No, let me introduce to you the one and only of many, many 33 RPM vinyls. We lost count, but I think somewhere around 30,000. 30,000? Yes, serious. It's not hard to see that Craig's got this thing about albums, and he's not alone. A lot of his customers come in not to buy, but just monkey around. Another thing I'm going to miss is the way you handle the albums, never actually touching the surface. Pretty soon you won't be able to handle them at all. We saw it with the 78s and the 8-tracks. Now the LPs are, too, becoming dinosaurs. Poor 80s man. And as for his taste in music, it all seems so final. He has no CD player. He's doomed to this vinyl. 